So this is going to sound out of left field, but I've always been kind of scared about how I'm going to pass on, die, whatever, however you want to say it. My brain plays this what if game and I'm always like, well, what if, you know, somebody runs a red light? What if um, there's an earthquake and the building collapses? What if there's a tornado? What if I go to sleep and just don't wake up? What if I slip in the shower and fall and break my neck? I'm sure we've all done this kind of thing, but what I'm actually more scared of now is that I won't remember my life when I pass on. And I've talked to you guys before and you guys have seen my videos where I'm, I have issues remembering certain words and whatever else. And I've always kind of attributed it to this motorcycle accident. I was in probably, how old was I? Maybe probably right around 20 years ago, just under 20 years ago, 20 years ago. I don't even remember what year it was. I just know it was about that time. I was in a pretty significant motorcycle accident in the hospital for a few weeks, had a skull fracture, had a bunch of injuries, whatever else, um, medically induced coma, the fun stuff, you know? And since then, I feel like my memory has con like continued to get really, really bad. Um, and it's not even like not remembering my life, it's, it's the small random things like what I had for breakfast two days ago or a word or a phrase that it feels like it's right there, but it, it literally causes me mental pain trying to reach that word or that phrase or whatever else. And I know I'm not the only person who has dealt with this, but I kept thinking it's from this motorcycle accident I was in. It's from the brain trauma, of, you know, of a skull fracture and whatever else. But then I started thinking, well, when I went vegan for a few years, and y'all don't judge me, I, I was doing it for a lot of different health reasons. Um, I went vegan for a few years, and I noticed that a lot of things started to deteriorate in those three years that I was vegan and since then. And I feel like a lot of my brain memory issues came from not only the motorcycle accident, but being vegan because I wasn't getting enough B12 because I didn't do it the right way, right? I didn't know you're supposed to take all these vitamins. I just, I just did it. And that's not one of those things you can just do. Just like you shouldn't go just straight to a carnivore diet. You shouldn't go straight into a keto diet. You should do a little bit of research and all these different things. And this was what, a, lo a long time ago before I really started researching more stuff, right? Um, but it started my wanting of researching things. But um, when I went vegan, I noticed uh, that I started having more of the brain fog, if you will. And then I started to attribute it not to going vegan and not getting vitamins because I didn't know at the time, but getting older. I'm about to be 42, right? So I'm thinking to myself, oh, it's normal as you get older to remember less and, and, and whatnot. And then the more I do research on things in our food supply now and what they've done to the food, what they're doing to the food, <laughs> what could possibly happen with um, the chicken, the beef, everything else, the more I realize that all these things they are putting into our food also cause a lot of issues. If you look at just the world in general, but more so our country, because a lot of the world does not use the same ingredients that we allow our into our food. And by we, I mean the government, not you and me. We have no say in what goes into our food unless we're growing our own, obviously, obviously. But I'm saying what's in your grocery stores, what's in your restaurants. Anyway, um, you don't realize all the stuff that they are putting into the food is contributing to the cancers, to the cognitive issues, to autism, to all different kinds of things. We did not have the same amount of mental issues and um, physical issues decades ago before all these things were added into our food, right? And it's possible you can say, yes, we did. We just didn't have the ability to know about it. We didn't have the internet and the, they weren't writing reports about it and, and whatnot. But now we do know. And if you really pay attention, it looks like a lot of it has been done lately because of the things that are in our food, because of the things in the air, whatever else. So I realized I need to find a way to try to uh, prolong my memory. I, I saw somebody with uh, all, Alzheimer's before, and I think that's how you're supposed to say is Alzheimer's. 
I used to work at a hair salon when I was younger as a receptionist. And there was a lady, her name was Dottie. She would come in to get her hair done. And over the years that I worked there, I noticed that her memory got worse and worse and worse each time she came in. And her husband had to start bringing her in because she would be sitting in the chair and forget where she was and, and freak out, right? Because she it was, it's like this weird, you're there and then suddenly you don't know what's going on. And it's the first time I'd ever um, come into contact with somebody with Alzheimer's and I didn't really understand how it worked, but her husband being there had ways to kind of bring her back to in the moment. Well, last night, um, my husband and my mom, my mother-in-law and I, because my the moms are here on vacation, uh, we watched a movie called Memory with Liam Neeson. And it's not really the best movie. It really isn't. It has like a lot of stars. It's really not that good. But it shows you kind of the onset of, uh, they want to call it early onset dementia. And I guess Alzheimer's and dementia are supposed to be in the same, the same frame, like the same kind of thing. But it made me realize, I've already, I started a sub stack, um, which is kind of going to be my way of having a, online journal, if you will, that anybody can read or whatever. But I realized I need to really start writing down my memories. A lot of them are going to be obviously here in YouTube videos here and on Squirrel Tribe 2.0, which is more of like my life vlog. It's not, you know, news related or whatever related. It's more just fun and let go and just, you know, be. Um, but I realized that I need to really start writing things down, not only for myself, but also maybe for my daughter in the future. If she wants to know things and what happens if when I'm 60, I can't remember things that I did as a child and I can't remember, you know, my first concert or my favorite movies or my favorite foods or the first, you know, time I went fishing, the first time I did so, so and so. So I've started a sub stack. I have to write my first thing. I haven't done it yet, but I'm really excited about that. But I've also got a journal that I've started and I actually bought a book at Books A Million, which is one of those um, daily things where each day you're supposed to fill, like answer the question. And one of the questions may be, who is your hero? And you're supposed to say who and write it down. And then the next one is, what's your favorite food and why? Or what's your first memory? Or who was your first love? Like random things so that when the book is all said and done, you yourself can look back on it in future years and reminisce or jog a memory, if you will. Or you can leave it to a, a kid, one of your kids, or somebody you care about that you want to know you a little bit better. Because it's one of those things where I was thinking about it earlier. I feel like a lot of people, when they write things down, if they if they know other people are going to see it, they aren't 100% open and honest because they worry about being judged. And I wonder if people do that in their regular diaries and journals. I've never been that way. Like you're going to judge me no matter what, whether I, no matter what I say, nobody's going to agree with me a hundred percent. Nobody's going to like me a hundred percent. You know what I mean? It, it is what it is. So I'd rather be 100% honest and blunt and it is what it is in everything I do. YouTube videos, life, my journal, Substack, my whatever. But it feels like this is something a lot of us really need to jump into because I can guarantee a lot of people watching this right now have realized the same thing I have where you don't understand why your brain isn't braining. Like I had that issue a couple days ago. I'm sitting here in the, in the car and I'm talking to you guys about, you know, um, holiday spending and stuff like that. And I'd had some coffee. I hadn't eaten anything yet, but I could not get my brain to remember a specific phrase. And I st now I still don't remember what I was trying to say then. A lot of you answered me in the comments. So thank you. I appreciate y'all more than you know. Um, but the whole, the whole not being able to fully grasp certain words that I've known my whole life, phrases that I've known my whole life, remembering what I did just a week or so ago, but can remember everything from when I was like four it, it really starts to weigh on me and bother me. And I realize I'm not the only person who's in that situation. There are a lot of you out there who are having the same issues, but maybe it hasn't really dawned on you what the culprit could be, or you haven't really thought about it, or you don't want to think about the fact that you're having trouble remembering certain things. And it makes me want to go, okay, well, I need to have the correct B12, the I think it's the one that starts with the M, not the C, or it's the C or the M. There's a certain kind of B12 that's the best one. I have it in my apartment. I'll think about it. I'm, I'll remember, hopefully, to check it out and leave it in a, a comment for you guys. Um, but I'm trying to make sure I take my B12. I'm trying to make sure that I 
try to remember like literally everything that happened throughout the day. I'm trying to pay attention to the ingredients that are in the things that I eat. You know, you don't want the red dye. You don't want this. You don't want that. I'm trying to be more cognizant of the things that could in the long term have a really like dire, nasty effect on my memory, not just my overall health, but my memory. Because to me, your overall health, obviously really friggin' important, but your brain is the most important part besides your heart. Your brain is the most important part of your body because it makes everything work besides your heart, obviously. Um, and if this kind of goes to shit, what do you do? You know what I mean? I don't want to at 60, 70 years old, be a vegetable because my brain has forgotten how to work because I have done it to myself by eating the things I know that the government is putting crap in that is causing these issues or by not doing the little things that I can do for myself to try to keep my brain sharp. They sell these things at bookstores, whether it's Barnes and Nobles, Books a Million, even Target, Walmart, wherever. They sell these like brain games kind of things where you have to um, solve the puzzles, do the riddle, whatever else. I tried to download an app on my phone to do it and I didn't, they don't really do anything. It's more about so you can see ads. So I deleted that, but I plan on going to one of the bookstores to buy some of these things. I actually bought some for my grandmother-in-law uh, a year or two ago. She is now in a nursing home with full onset dementia and, but not Alzheimer's. So I don't know why they say dementia and Alzheimer's are the same kind of thing because she remembers things. She remembers plenty of stuff, but I don't, I got to look into that because I'm not hundred percent sure what the difference is there, but obviously I need to figure it out as I get older. Um, but we bought her some of those books to kind of keep her mind sharp. She's 92. So for her 90th birthday, we got her these books as just a way to have fun, if you will, but also test your brain and try to keep it up and running, you know, cause if you don't work certain things, they kind of fall by the wayside and go to crap. Just like your body. If you don't move, bad things happen to your muscles, bad things happen to your body. I figure if you don't use your brain for more than just watching TV or playing on your phone or random, you know, non whatever conversations, like it's just the weather, it's just, you know, whatever, uh, you're going to lose the ability to have those deep thoughts to connect the, th the problems. If there's like a, you know, math problem, so Sudoku, Sudoku, I don't know how you say that. That one, kicks my butt. That game kicks my butt. I cannot figure it out. So now I'm like, that's what I need to focus on. That feels like that brain tease that would help me kind of get back into full mental stimulation, right? But I need to find a way to work on my memory. And I used to have the best memory. I waited tables, the other jobs that I've had in my life, I've had to remember a bunch of stuff, which is why now when I make like the deep dive videos, I have to have all of my notes or I'm going to forget because it's too much going on in here and I cannot keep it all um, together. It jumbles up with everything else that's floating around in my head and then, you know what I mean? So it was just a thing I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about today. I know it's not the normal, the last few videos haven't been, but it is because family is here. I don't have the time really to sit down and really deep dive into things the way we generally do. I will get back into that obviously, but for right now, these are just random things that I'd love to talk to you guys about. And I appreciate you letting me talk to you about these things. Um, but I wonder if any of you out there are having the same kind of issues that I am. And if you have attributed it to either lack of certain vitamins or what's in the food, or if it's, you know, really does have to do with getting older, especially for females, um, pre-menopause, perimenopause, I think is the right thing. Is it because of the hormone changes? Is it everything else? Like there's so many things that it feels like are working against us and our bodies and our brains and everything else that how do you really know where to start to keep everything on track? Eating as clean as humanly possible obviously is one of the best answers. And I want to say it's not always feasible because it isn't. It is very expensive a lot of the times to eat organic and super clean and whatever else. And a lot of people can't do that. And then there's other people who know they need to, but really like to go out and have a meal somewhere. That's me. I'm not going to lie. I understand that there's things I could be doing to make things a lot better on myself and easier or whatever. And I haven't fully 100% jumped into it yet. Um, I was in that lifestyle a long time ago and I need to get back into it. And that is the plan. But I want to know if any of you have the same 
memory issues, if you yourselves are working on something, do you have a journal that you keep? Do you have some sort of online presence? Because there's like WordPress and Substack and other things I'm sure where you can basically write out whatever you want and you can make it like a I think it's a blog anybody can read it and comment on it whatever else or you can make it private and keep it just for yourself so that you have this record of your thoughts and your whatever else and then later on in life if you wanted you could just share it out with everybody which I think is kind of cool I think it helps people know people better um, when you can have that glimpse into more than just the superficial outside conversations that a lot of people have. So that was just my random stuff for today. Uh, I appreciate you all for, again, letting me just kind of run my mouth here. Uh, it, it does make me feel better. It gets things out of my head and out into the the world, if you will. You're kind of my audio journal 99% uh, of the time. So I do appreciate you for that, uh, just so you know. Um, I hope you guys have a fabulous Saturday. I tried to keep this kind of short for you so it wasn't like taking up your entire day. Um, that is it, Squirrel Tribe. I do love you all immensely, and I will see you again tomorrow. Okay, bye.